Hi guys, welcome to The Art of Server. Today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a bootable USB drive for installing CentOS 7. So to start, let's figure out how to download CentOS 7. Uh, basically, you go to CentOS.org, which is the main website for the project, and you'll see a big button here that says Get CentOS Now. I'll click on that. And up here in the next page, there will be uh, a link here to download the DVD ISO. Uh, or the stream DVD ISO. Now, because CentOS 8 uh, was recently released, this is actually for CentOS 8, but I'm interested in CentOS 7, and, or if you're in, uh, interested in a different type of ISO image, you can go down here and it says, if the above is not for you, uh, alternative downloads might be, and so click on the alternative downloads. All right, so now we get a list of the other available downloads, and I'm uh, interested in getting the latest uh, CentOS 7 here. So I'll click on the mirrors for this. And this is one of the mirrors that I've used in the past, so I'll go ahead and click on that. And here you will see a variety of ISO images that you can download. Now typically most people will use the DVD ISO, and this is basically um, an ISO image with about 4 gigs um, of space. And so that's why it's labeled DVD because it actually fits on a DVD. And this has the main packages for a CentOS 7 installation, but it does not have everything. And so if you uh, download that and install CentOS based on this image, you might not have all of the packages that you want in the, during the initial installation. You'll have enough to get the installation to complete, uh, but you might have to uh, post installation go ahead and download additional uh, packages that were not available during install. Now, personally, I like to use the Everything ISO image, which is a larger image. It is roughly about 11 gigabytes here. Um, I'm going to be using a USB drive that is about 16 gigabytes, so I have plenty of space to accommodate for this uh, image. And the reason I like to pick this image is that it basically has all the packages uh, within that image. And that allows me to select any of the available packages during installation without having to do a post-installation download of additional packages. So it kind of saves me a step in the installation process. There are also other images uh, that provide different types of GUIs. Uh, this is the GNOME one and the KDE one. And there's also a minimal one. So if you don't have a very large USB drive and or you maybe don't have a lot of bandwidth and you just want to be able to install something small and get the installation kickstarted, um, you might want to pick the minimal uh, ISO image, which is uh, the smallest image available here. And if you have a local uh, repository of all the um, the packages or you're going to install over the network because you maybe you have a very high speed uh, internet connection and you'd rather just do that uh, you can also pick the net install which will basically pull all the packages of, uh, over the network but this requires you to have a network connection to the repositories that you're going to use all right so now for the sake of saving time i've actually already downloaded the everything iso image and so let's go ahead and take a look at that all right, so here's my downloads folder, and you'll see that I already have the CentOS 7 x86-64 everything uh, ISO image download, and let me go ahead and open a terminal in this folder. And I'll just minimize that and blow this up. Let's uh, increase the font here so you guys have a better view of this. All right, so here, if I do a listing, again, you'll see that we have the CentOS um, ISO image. Now, before we get started, we need to identify the device file name for the USB drive that um, I'm going to be using here. So if you do a uh, LS USB, you will get a listing of all the USB devices connected to your Linux machine. Now the commands I'm showing you here, uh, again, will work across any Linux distribution. So this is not, I'm using Fedora Workstation here just because that's my preference, but uh, any Linux Workstation or Linux uh, operating system. So a lot of people use Ubuntu. Um, these commands will be identical uh, on Ubuntu as well. And actually, it will most likely apply in Mac OS. Well, at least the DD command later on will apply. But um, anyway, I've got a SanDisk uh, USB drive here. 
and so I know it's connected and if I do a LSCSI um, it will show that I have this USB drive um, it's identified as dev SDA okay so that's the device file that I'm going to use in order to write to that USB drive now it's really important that you identify the correct device file name if you uh, make a mistake here you could end up uh, destroying whatever other device you end up um, writing to and in particular uh, be very careful uh, I'm on a virtual machine here so um, the USB drive is showing up as dev SDA but if you're on a bare metal machine most likely dev SDA is your first hard drive which is probably your boot drive and has your operating system and everything like that so if you follow my directions uh, here today verbatim um, you might end up destroying your boot drive so I'm just going to caution you guys do not just cut and paste uh, directly what I'm typing in uh, listen to what I'm uh, saying and actually identify the proper device file name for your USB drive because the DD command that we're going to use to write to it has no safeguards and the moment you hit enter it's going to start doing what you ask it to do so you have to be very careful about uh, selecting the proper device file name okay so with that warning said um, we're going to use the DD command to write that ISO image to that U to this USB drive so we'll start with um, oh actually hold on um, this command uh, requires root privileges so I'm going to escalate to root here and now I can run the dd command so let's do dd status uh, progress so status equals progress uh, will give some feedback um, to the terminal so you can see that it's actually doing something otherwise dd just kind of you know doesn't uh, provide any output and just keeps writing uh, and because the process is going to take a while, in my case, it's going to be an 11 gig file um, to the USB drive. That's probably going to take a little bit of time there. Uh, it's nice to be able to see uh, a little bit of stat status updates to kind of have confirmation that something's still working. Okay, and because this is uh, typically going to be a very large file that you're writing, um, to speed up the process, I'm going to use uh, slightly larger block sizes. So we'll say uh, 1 meg block sizes. And if is for the input file and in this case it will be the CentOS image and the output file will be dev SDA this is the USB drive uh, that you're going to be using to create the bootable uh, installer for CentOS 7 alright so be very careful about uh, what you put for this output here because the moment you hit enter it's going to start writing to it and if you point it to the wrong device you will end up uh, writing to the wrong device and corrupting it or destroying some data that you know you probably did not intend to do all right now before i hit enter here one thing that i see a lot of people do that causes a lot of frustration and i want to just point it out in case you're relatively new to the world of linux or unix in general um, the slash dev sda device file name here goes uh, to the raw device and this is what you want but a lot of people might mistakenly type in something like this, which is dev sda1, which points to the first partition on that USB drive. Now, a lot of times the USB drive you're using might already have uh, been used previously, so it might have uh, some formatting on it, and it might have a partition on it where you know some other operating system had put a file system on this drive, and people might. Uh, especially if you're not familiar with you know this type of thing you might mistakenly type in this instead of the, the uh, dev SDA um, so if you do this the command will run because like I said DD has no safeguards it will just simply try to do what you tell it to do and it's going to start writing this image to the first partition and what's going to happen is you're going to plug that USB drive hoping to boot off of it and it won't boot and the reason is because the boot sector and everything that's part of this image is not uh, in the proper location. Instead, it is uh, it starts within the first partition instead of uh, at the beginning of the raw device. So anyway, I just want to point that out. I've seen a lot of people do that and uh, pull their hair out for several hours until they realize their mistake because it's a very, very subtle thing that makes a huge difference. All right, so let me make sure I don't do that. And let's go ahead and start writing the image 
to the USB drive. Alright guys, so as you can see that took quite a while. Um, the DD output says it took about 1100 seconds. So that was a fairly large uh, ISO image, so it took quite a while to write that to the USB drive. Now, once you're done here, one final thing um, that I, I usually do just to be safe is to run the sync command. And you'll see in this case it just returned immediately, uh, which is good. Uh, but basically sometimes um, when you're writing this, this much data to a device that's a little bit slow, uh, some of that data could be sitting in buffers and it might be continuing to write the those buffers to the actual drive itself in the background and if you run sync it basically um, forces that write and to make sure that all the buffers are flushed out that all the data that is supposed to be on the usb drive is actually written to the usb drive all right so uh, that is basically it and uh, all you have to do now is plug that usb drive into uh, whatever machine you want to install CentOS 7 in. All right, so hopefully you guys found that useful and uh, give me a like if you like this video and uh, be sure to subscribe to see more videos from me. All right, have a good day, bye-bye.